So I want you all for the next few minutes to imagine that your career is an online professional poker player. You guys have spent the last few years of your lives working really hard, studying textbooks, theories, um, just advanced theories of online poker. Do you feel so comfortable enough that you feel as though you have a comparative advantage among, among every other person who plays online that you can successfully make a career out of it? Now imagine that one day you're going into the office, which is your computer, you sign on to your poker account, and it's frozen. All the money, all the work, everything that you live for has been frozen. At that moment, you realize that the government seized all um, use of online poker. In 2010, online poker was deemed illegal by the government. So now, you're an angry poker player. You're upset, <laughs> you're frustrated, you're technically jobless, you have to figure out where your money is, what you're going to do, how you're going to support your family, how you're going to support yourself, and how you're going to make it after this whole situation. So what I want to talk about today is what the problem is, what online poker is, and why it is illegal. Then I want to talk about why I personally feel as though it is wrong to deem it illegal. Then I want to give a situation how we can solve this problem, what will happen once we solve this problem, and then I want to inform you all how to take the next step to make sure that online poker stays legal or becomes legal again in the United States. So let's first talk about the problem. The government feels as though the main question is whether or not poker is a game of luck or skill. Of course, anything, there is luck involved, but the government disregards any fact that there is skill involved in poker. Just like anything you do in life, you have to study. And like poker, there are textbooks and professional poker players who write books based on online poker to help understand the logistics of it. So there is a skill aspect. There are years of studying before you should officially make it your main source of income. Also, unlike other jobs, poker is a job where you are risking a lot, but there is a bigger reward in the end because you are gambling with more money. Um, some people also find that a good way is to be financially responsible. You can't be a poker player if you don't know how to manage your money right. This is probably the first thing you would do and to realize whether or not online gambling could be a career for you. You spend a few months playing, you lose all the money, and you have no money left, you can't be a poker player. If you're able to financially be responsible, budget your money carefully, and understand how much you can and cannot afford, that might be an option. So a quote from the New York Times, they said, poker may not be your nine to five job, but the time you would spend at your nine to five job, you could spend playing poker. Though you don't wake up at 8 a.m. to go play poker online, and it's based on the action happening online, it is, in a sense, the same as a nine to five job because you are sitting at the computer and you are working, just at different times. So, on average, about 40,000 people a day in America, when legal, were playing online poker. With this graph, out of those about 40,000, 8,000 of them said that they played poker professionally. So with this statistic, you're taking about 8,000 jobs away from people who are making a pretty dis decent living off online gambling. Another great tool that professional poker players have used to, in a sense, make their job seem more traditional, they have poker accountants now. Poker accountants are just like any other accountants. They make sure your money is safe. In an article from PokerNews.com, which is kind of like the New York Times for poker players, they said that Anne Margaret Johnson is a certified public accountant and the author of How to Turn Your Poker Playing into a Business. She has made a career out of taking most poker players who have deemed their career professional and or as their main occup occupation, and they have um, made it possible for them to financially be responsible with their money. Also, she has made um, claims in the article that there are things that poker players get deducted from taxes, like their chair, their computer, their mouse pad, things you would never think, but things they need at, their, at the highest level to make sure their career is going well, because as funny as it sounds, if they don't have a comfortable chair, they're not going to focus as well. If they don't have a fast computer, they won't be able to log on. Just little things like that, Poker Accountant has been able to help other poker players. And it also gives these poker players a great feel to have a somewhat traditional job, because they are getting taxed for things and they are 
working and getting money. Now, um, how to satisfy this? If the government feels as though it is illegal, the best way they could do this is maybe start government-operated online poker sites. They feel that it's not safe, the government should monitor it. If they monitor it, there won't be any shady business going on in the back because they are running it all. So, I want you guys to visualize what would happen if poker stayed illegal. First off, 8,000 people still are jobless, and this number is just going to rise. In the Wall Street Journal, they said with online poker in the U.S., players are given more opportunity to keep it legal, illegal. So now, I want you guys, now I want to tell you guys how to act on this and how to make sure that online poker can become legal. There is a website called the Poker Player Alliance, which helps poker players, like all of us, keep it legal. <laughs> they, um, this website is very simple, it's called the ppa.org, and it's a very useful website. I do want to end you with one quote from the Washington Journal that says, we are fighting to protect our freedom for online poker. Thank you.